Hi everyone, this is Inside the TMC Family. I'm Faith Howard Mooney from the Mortgage Collaborative. And with me today, I have Danielle Geyser, who is the COO of Thrive Mortgage. One of my favorite people to talk to in the industry. So thanks for doing this, Danielle. Yeah, thank you, Faith. I'm excited to be here. This is a lot of fun. So thanks for thinking of me and including me. Yeah, for sure. Um, tell us a little bit about Thrive. Yeah, so here. Thrive Mortgage definitely started as a family-oriented um, business, and, and we've just grown from there about almost 25 years ago. I think we're right at 23, 22, somewhere around there. Um, we are primarily based in Austin, Texas. That's where we're headquartered, so bulk of our business is in Texas. Um, but we are actually nationwide, pretty much, and we are registered or licensed, I'm sorry, in 46 states. Um, I personally live in Southern California in Huntington Beach, so I have the luxury of getting to fly back into Texas frequently and eat some good barbecue, a couple margaritas, and of course queso, never going to miss that. Um, but yeah, we, we've really expanded our footprint. We do a lot of, of construction business, especially in the Colorado markets, and recently brought on a, a new team, a larger team in the Midwest, formerly known as AMSCO, and just really enjoying getting Getting to know them, integrating them into our, our culture, which is always a big hot topic for us. I know everybody talks about culture, but we really try to live it and breathe it and keep it at the forefront. So that way, as we continue to grow and welcome folks into our Thrive family and Thrive Nation, as we like to call it, um, we still have that same feel of the mom and pop shop, even though we are a large IMB. We did um, just over $2.2 billion last year. Not quite going to hit it this year, but, you know, always trying to, to make up the gaps where we can. So it's been yeah. it's been a fun yeah. ride. You're you're not you're not the only one that's like not going to quite make it to the same place that they made it last <laughs> right? year. Right. So. Hey, the doors are still open. So that's the biggest thing. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So tell me, what was your first job that you ever had? So this is kind of a fun story. I'm glad you're asking this. I don't get to tell this too often. So my first job was actually, I, I was living in Richardson, Texas with my family. It's where I grew up, just right outside of Dallas. And my first job was actually at a little florist. Um, it was really, I, don't, I wouldn't even call it a florist because that's kind of overdoing it. But um, it was just a little flower shop, like little corner flower shop. And I had gone, this was in high school, gone with one of my friends at the time. She was looking for a job. So I just went with her and walked in. They handed her an application. They handed me an application. And I'm like, oh okay, sure, I'll fill this out. I ended up getting the job. She did not. Oh, no. Fast forward two <laughs> weeks later, they're trying to teach me how to put together arrangements. I was not successful. That is that is not my wheelhouse of flower arrangements at all. So I ended up taking the money, doing customer service on the front side, phone orders, got really good at work in that cash register. But that was my my first job where, and and yes, I am still friends with the girl that I beat out the job for. You. Yeah, <laughs> we are we are still friends. But yeah, that was it was a really fun job after school um, for the last two years of of high school, and just really I think got to hone in on customer service skills and money handling, which helped me later in life when I I started in the banking world. So. Yeah. 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 And sometimes, I mean, that's a good experience for kind of where your path has gone. Sometimes I tell people it's like that first job a lot of times is kind of defining for you what you know you don't want to do, right. you know, versus <laughs> what you what you do want to do, like arranging flowers. We yeah. don't know that isn't your thing. Don't want to do that. No, I'm not good <laughs> at it. <laughs> so then how did you go from that at the very, very beginning? And how did you end up getting into mortgage? That's always a good question because I don't know anybody actually wakes up and is like, I want to be in the mortgage industry. No, I feel like we all just kind of have fallen into it and then we can't get out of it once we're in it. Um, I was, so I went to school at SMU and studied econ um, with financial applications, which oh, wow. helped me get my first job um, at Bank of America, truly as a personal banker and worked my way up through that system to eventually become a banking center manager got to become really good friends with my in-house loan officer. She would saunter in at about two o'clock, um, have a lunch date, or I'm sorry, she would come in at about 10, have a lunch date, and then saunter back out at about two o'clock. 
Meanwhile, I'm in, you know, full suit heels from like 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., six nights a week. And I'm like, I am doing this wrong. <laughs> there is a better <laughs> way. Um, and so she really just kind of took me under her wing started teaching oh, nice. me about the business, um, you know, actually even got me involved in, in some loans and was able to kind of start a book of business myself. And so at that point in time, I said, this is what I want to do full time. Um, and so I got my license and moved into actually lending with B of A to start quickly realized being a loan officer is it's high pressure. I mean, it's, it's a tough job. And so um, partnered back with that, that same wonderful friend that I have now, lifelong friend, um, and really got on into the operation side and just really fell in love with it and didn't look back. Never, never actually went back into origination. Um, still have my license because I'm not sitting for any of those tests again <laughs> <laughs> or that education piece. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, just really fell into it looking for a change to get out of the, the grind of the truly yeah. retail banking world so yeah I started in the banking world too so did I you really totally understand that I yeah. did yeah I did way know back that. In, way back in the day and it was the same sort of thing get me out of this suit and heels and you know into into something where people are really truly very friendly and you can get to know people in a different way yeah um so that's that's super fun so, so yeah. when you started way back when obviously you had a support the support of a really good friend, which had to be very helpful. But is there one thing that you, you know, when you think about it now, that you would tell somebody coming into the industry in that situation that you just wish you knew? Yes. <laughs> and I think it's incredibly pertinent right now in this, this time that we're okay. in is expect change and expect the ebbs and flow of the industry. And, you know, just develop a little bit of, of thick skin to, to be able to survive and thrive, find ways to thrive. Um, you know, that was something that was really shocking because I had kind of gotten into the mortgage industry around 2005, you know, started originating some oh, loans. Oh, yeah. And then 08 through 010 hit, and I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's dead. The housing market is over, you know, and, and again, that, that mentor of mine was just, you know, hang in there, just keep doing, find new ways to reach new people and serve your community and things are going to change. That's the one constant in this industry is that things will change. And so as the pendulum swings one way, it's always going to swing back again and just to, to ride it out and, and to continue to look for ways to find the marketplace and reach out to them. So. Yeah. Great thing for new people into our industry to hear for sure. Um, and especially if you're coming from like financial services or at the banking side where you don't have that right. same. I mean, you think of them as all financial services, but on the banking side, it's if you're in mortgage flat. on the banking side, you have that, yeah. that swing. But if you're on the actual banking side, mm -hmm. it's pretty flat, you know, for the most part. So um, yeah, that's great, great words of wisdom. If you weren't in mortgage, what would we find you doing? I would be demoing houses. I guess the the real answer is fully oh, renovating wow. houses, but my favorite part is truly the demolition work. I mean, there's there's something very satisfying <laughs> about taking a crowbar to a wall and knocking it down. But no, I really enjoy, and I think it's just the antithesis of what I do every day is, you know, sitting in a computer and relationships, but you know, there is something about being able to take down a wall and, and rearrange a house and then actually see your, your progress. So still not too far. I mean, still in real estate, not too far from what I'm doing now, but I, I would be more on the, the hands-on side of it and probably flipping houses, renovating, acquiring more properties. So Very get cool. my hands dirty. <laughs> Very cool. I like that a lot. So you're in, you live in a beautiful location, obviously. I do. So it's you it's get really see... hard and difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get to see beauty every day and you don't have the below zero winters. Um, but share with us like what your favorite U.S. city is outside of the beauty of where you live and why? That's really hard. That's a good question. Um, 
You know, I think we've had so many opportunities, especially, you know, through TMC and the different conferences and just being able to explore different cities. And I know, you know, every time I'm at a TMC conference, being able to see different parts of the city, whether it's a, a, you know, a happy hour or a sponsored event or, you know, even just individual dinners and and finding that local cuisine and those local hot spots and really, really seeing it. Um, I personally love New Orleans simply because of the food. (laughs) I'm not going (laughs) to lie. It's, it is a fun city, but it is a great city to eat your way through and not during the summer. Let me just preface that. (laughs) Go during the winter. Um, but I, I really do enjoy, absolutely enjoy New Orleans and, um, in Dallas, I have to say. And I think that's probably because my family's still there. A lot of good dear friends are still there. So anytime I go back, it's, it's a really happy occasion to get to reconnect with everyone. So yeah, that's one that um, New Orleans, I absolutely love too. I always think that you walk a lot when you're there. So the balance of walking a lot m- makes it okay for you to eat. So I like that. <laughs> yes, I'm sticking with that. Yeah. Yes, I've got to walk that's all these beignets off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but we haven't been to Dallas yet, but I'm hopeful yeah. we're, you know, looking for things kind of more central U.S. And we've had some conversations about that because I love Dallas, too, yeah. as well. Um, well, I appreciate you. Yeah. It's always such a pleasure to talk with you. Same it's fun here, getting Paige. to know a little bit more about you. And um, we love, of course, Thrive and everything that your team does within the TMC family and for the industry as a whole. So thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for just all of the opportunities that TMC really creates for us, whether it's advocacy or just connection with other members on how do I do this help? So it's it's really a great network that brings so many positive benefits. So really excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much.